Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My speech today is in English, but uh, the information that I gathered today about the Sayyid's life, in case those that want to read about his life in uh, Arabic, there is a book called Al Muqaddas al Shirazi. It's written by one of the dear friends and the dear students of the Sayyid, Al Sheikh Abdul Azim Al Muhtada Al Bahrani. If you Google Al Muqaddas Al Shirazi on the internet, you can download this book. It's a PDF about the Sayyid's life, and he wrote it for the Sayyid. So, in case any information today, most of my information today will be from this book. And as well from what I've heard from the ulama in Qom and from Karbala. And inshallah, we will look at the life of the Sayyid. So tonight, tonight we are gathered and we mourn the loss of the Sayyid. We, learn, we mourn the son of Fatima alayhi salam. And we are in the Ayyam al-Fatimiya as well. The Sayyid left us during these nights, Fatimiya nights. The third Fatimiya, insha'Allah, will be upcoming next week on Wednesday. On the 20, 26th of Jumada Al-Ula. Today is the 27th of Jumada. So yesterday was a day when the whole world, the sky dimmed, the moon left us, and the sun stopped shining. That was the day when Sayyid Al-Ridha, rahmatullahi alayhi, left this world. Why do I say this? Why do I say that the sky dimmed and the moon stopped shining and the sun stopped shining? Imam Ali alayhi salam in Nahj al balagha he quotes a hadith. The Imam alayhi salam says, live amongst the people that if you were to die, they will cry over you. Live amongst them that when you live amongst the people that if you cry, they will die over you and that when you're there, they crave for you. Sayyid al-Rida, alayhi rahmata wa ridwan was this kind of individual. After his martyrdom on the 26th of Jumada al-Ula, Sayyid al-Rida, if you put on the TVs on that day, on that Sunday, you would have seen three days after when his janazah came to Karbala, the millions of people that were there to commemorate the Sayyid. People that have never met the Sayyid in their entire lives came out crying in tears, commemorating the Sayyid. People who have only seen his picture, his picture came outside to commemorate the Sayyid in Karbala. And Allah has granted him a maqam so high that he is right now where? Beside his grandfather, Abi Abdullah al Hussein sallallahu wa sallam as soon as you enter the Haram, you have Bab al-Qibla, then you have the door on the left of Bab al-Qibla. You enter the Haram, who do you say hi to first? You say hi to the Sayyid because you pass right by him. Meaning the Sayyid, every year, he greets 24 million, 32 million zawar of Abdul Hussein alayhi salam. The Sayyid every year sits there and he greets the zawar of Ibi Abdullah alayhi salam. And he was also buried next to his grandfather. Sayyid Mirza Mahdi Shirazi, who was known in Karbala as the person that used to give hajah to people. People used to ask him for a hajah, he would raise his hands and Allah would give them that hajah. This is the Sayyid al Rahil. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Farajahum wa na ala adahum. Sayyid Rada, Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. On a day like this, joining us in our tears is the angels. And who else was happy on this day? Of course, the enemies are happy and Satan was happy on this day. On a day like this, Satan and his cohorts were happy. Now somebody might ask me, brother, how come Satan will be happy? What does Satan have to do with any of this? The answer you get from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. In a hadith narrated in Kitab al-Kafi, Usul al-Kafi. Volume 1, there's a bab in Kitab al-Kafi called Faqd al-Ulama. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam speaks of Faqd al-Ulama. What does he say? He said, Ma min ahadin yamutu min al-mu'minina ahabba ila iblis min al-fuqaha. That 
that Satan, if any believer dies, the most loved to the heart of Satan, to the shaitan, is when a faqih dies. And surely, Sayyid Rida deserves the title of faqih. And now when I mentioned the angels weep over the death of a believer, in a hadith narrated in the same chapter in Kitab al-Kafi, if you actually look the way Shaykh al-Kulayni compiled Kitab al-Kafi, Usul al-Kafi starts with the abwab of the ulama, of the knowledge, of obligatory, how knowledge is obligatory upon the believer. So you see the importance of ulama, you see the importance of knowledge. So in this hadith, in the same chapter, hadith number three, basically what does he say? This is on the authority of Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. إِذَا مَاتَ الْمُؤْمِنْ بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْمَلَائِكَةَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَبَقَى وَبِقَاءَ الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي كَانَ يَعْبُدَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا So the Imam alayhi salam says when a believer dies, the angels weep over him. And all of the lands on the earth where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped, they cry for him. Then he continues on saying, any place that this person seek supplication to Allah, even that preys on him. Then at the end, the Imam ends by saying, the true believing fuqaha are the strongholds of the Islamic system, just as a fortress surrounds a city. That is the true faqih. And surely we can say that Sayyidina Muhammad Allah Shirazi was of those true faqaha. An individual that when you look at his face, just by looking at the Sayyid's face, you feel something in your heart that you want to see him. Anna, I have never met the Sayyid. The only way I've met the Sayyid is through his lectures online, through his voice on the internet. All I've met is I've met the sons of Sayyid Rada. This past ziyara, I was blessed to go to Qom, al muqaddasa and to visit my, for my first time with Sayyid al masuma alayhi salam I visited Sayyid al marjah and then I asked one of the Sada in Qom, Sayyid Muhammad Bakr al-Qazwini. I'm like, Sayyidna, I know the Sayyid's sons live by here. Is there any way you can get me to meet them? I just want to see them. I never smelled their father. I've never seen their father. So I wanted to smell the smell that comes from them. I told them, Sayyidna, can you please, I'm only here for two more days. I want to see these two orphans that the Sayyid left for us. I saw them, alhamdulillah. And let me tell you this, as soon as I saw those two, my eyes filled with tears. Because when I saw them, I see their father. And inshallah, inshallah, these will be the next to take on their father's role. Salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. As you know, even our current marja' Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi, what did he say? What did he say when the Sayyid was lost? He said, كَانَ أَمَلِي بِمُسْتَقْبَلِ الْإِسْلَامِ أَنْ يَقُودَ الْأُمَّةَ بَعْدِي He was my hope. My hope lied in Sayyid Rada. And after he left, he was heartbroken. His father, al mujaddid al-Thani, Sayyid Muhammad al-Shirazi, what did he say about his son? One day, the story is narrated by, by Sheikh Jal Ma'ash. He said, one day a person came towards Sayyid Muhammad al-Shirazi. He told him, your son, he's not eating anything, he's so skinny. Tell him to eat something. How did the Sayyid respond? He said, my son Muhammad Rada, ma khulqa lihal dunya My son Muhammad Rada, he was not created for this world. As you can see, even the way this, how the Sayyid used to eat was in moderation. Because he has something more important to give his self and his soul for Islam. Let us look into the life of the Sayyid now. So the Sayyid, he was born in the year 1379 after Hijrah, which is the year 1951 in Karbala in Iraq. And of course, he was born in the family of Shirazi. And there's really there's nothing to say about Sayyid al-Shirazi's family. Everybody knows about the family 
and about how great this family is and about how much this family السلام, has given towards the Ummah from his father Sayyid Muhammad, the king of writers, from his grandfather Sayyid Mahdi and his great grandfather Sayyid Muhammad Hassan al Shirazi. The Sayyid, the first thing that his father did with his son is he put him in a school for Hafad al Quran. The first thing. And when he finished with this school, he was a half of the Quran. His brother Sayyid Muhammad Ali narrates, he's like my, my brother Sayyid Muhammad Rida, he gave a huge emphasis on the Quran. That while he was in his 20s, he wrote a book called, called At-Tadabbur Fil Quran. In his 20s, before he, either after he left Karbala or when he was in Kuwait. He used to say that my brother would take such emphasis on the Quran and tadbir of the Quran and tafsir of the Quran. Every day in the morning after Salat al-Fajr, he would, do, he would read his Quran, but he would always read Quran while he's facing the Qibla. That was the sunnah of my brother, Sayyid Muhammad Rada. Every day, that was his sunnah, to sit there and read Quran in a very eloquent voice with tadbir. So after... Uh, basically, I want to actually add this too. Haikum as salam. Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Thani ala. Thani ala hub al Hassani wa al Hussein. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Jil farajahum wa naal adum. I forgot to mention about how how was the Sayyid born. His brother, Sayyid Murtada Shirazi, who is in Najaf right now, he explains this is a story that was between the family. Of course, after Sayyid died, it became part of his biography. He says that there is the amal of Masjid al-Sahla. One of the amal of Masjid al-Sahla is for 40 days, 40, 40 nights, Afwan. You go to Masjid al-Sahla on every Wednesday, and you will be granted with the ru'ya of Sahab al-Asri wa zaman and a blessing from the Imam. Sayyid Muhammad al-Shirazi, his father, for 40 nights, on every Wednesday, meaning about 10 months, he would perform the a'mal and deeds of Masjid al-Sahla. And he was granted with the ru'ya in his dream of Sahab al-Asri wa zaman And that same morning, the hadith from his brother says, he came home and he was granted this child. So you can see that Sayyid Muhammad really isn't from this dunya. It was a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this, to the, to the people on the earth. And we do not take advantage of this gift. We still do not take advantage of this gift. We should have been able to take advantage and not deceive him. So we'll continue on. Well, let's talk about his studies. Like I said, he first studied in uh, the, the school of Hafad al-Quran in Karbala. After that, of course, he finished his studies and he migrated to Kuwait. He migrated to Kuwait because of course of the Ba'ath party and Saddam alayhi la'na and how they used to oppress the Shirazi family at that time and all the ulama basically at that time. Basically when he was there he started finishing more of the preliminary studies. And at that time as well he also used to teach, sorry, used to give lectures to the youth in Kuwait. And at the year 1399 after Hijrah, so 1980, Gregorian calendar, he migrated to Qom al muqaddasa where he finished his studies with his uncle, Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi, and also under ulama such as Ayatollah al-Khurasani, Allah yahfaza. And that's when, of course, he got his ijtihad around that time. And then from that time on, from the year 1989, so basically for my age, I was a year old at that time, the Sayyid began giving lectures in Bahth al-Kharaj until the last day before he died. Every day, he has lectures. According to what I heard from the biography, it was every Wednesday night or every Thursday night, the Sayyid had a lecture in his Bahth al-Kharaj. What's interesting here, the Sayyid, Sayyid knew something's going to come forth for him, something's going to happen to him, he's going to pass away. So one of the family members narrates, it was either Sayyid Sadiq or one of the students, that that week, so the Sunday, he passed away on Sunday. He passed away on Sunday. He always does his lectures on Wednesday or Thursday was, I think. He made sure he did it earlier. 
The Sayyid always has an intricate schedule. He never changes his schedule. He always has a schedule that he follows every single week. That week his schedule changed. Another thing, his family members narrate that every summer Sayyid Rada goes to visit Imam Rada alayhi salam in Mashhad. That summer, or that year before he passed away, that summer, he went earlier. Something, the Sayyid knew something's going to happen. I want to do my last ziyarah, 